a regular meal in Nigeria cost me about 500 to 1,000 Naira, which is equivalent to two to three dollars to eat a variety of foods such as amala, jollof rice, egusi. And so for a three square meal, I spend just about six to nine dollars in a day in my country, Nigeria. You can then imagine my shock when I came to America for the first time and had to spend $8 on just a single meal, which is the cost of three meals in my country. The painful part of this experience was not just the fact that I spent $8 to eat salads that were not filling to my stomach, but the fact that I was spending so much on just a single meal. And this is because $8 in my country is a lot of money. The United Nations Human Development Index ranks Nigeria to be 157th out of 171 countries. And it states that 70% of Nigerians earn less than $2 a day. And so you see poverty continues to be a problem in my country, Nigeria, and for most African countries, which explains why we have worse health indices. And the most vulnerable population is always women and children. In a country like Nigeria, 60% of payment for health care is still out of pocket. And so you find individuals further pushed into poverty because of financial catastrophe. Even though there are many policies in Nigeria to tackle issues of poverty and ensure universal health coverage, we still have poor health indices. Every 10 minutes in Nigeria, a woman dies on account of pregnancy and childbirth. And out of 10 children that are born, one will not live to celebrate the fifth birthday. These appalling statistics shouldn't be our lot if we are able to translate and implement our policies to effective programs. These can only be achieved when we have true servant leaders. My earliest memories of servant leadership dates back to the years when I was much younger. Being the first of four children, I learned quite early the importance of serving and motivating my siblings. A particular task that comes to mind during childhood is having to separate beans from his husk, a task that was not particularly interesting and fun to do. My mom had given instructions on what to be done and I needed to get my siblings to work with me to achieve results in record time. Knowing fully well that this wasn't a task that was enjoyable, I motivated my siblings rather than imposing the task on them. After all, I was a leader and being the first child, I could just dish out the responsibility on them. But instead, I joined my siblings to achieving the task. I made the task a competition with encouraging incentives and we got to finish the task faster than I thought. So you see, when leaders motivate, when leaders serve and have a clear vision, and when leaders are able to inspire others, they achieve results. The worsening health indices in Nigeria and the poor implementation of programs can only be corrected when we have effective leaders who take into account the felt needs of their members and consider the social determinants of health such as poverty as a bane to health. In my seven years as a public health physician, connecting marginalized women and children to preventive and curative services, I have seen different forms of leadership. I have seen leaders that legislate from afar, sitting in their air-conditioned offices and make decisions without knowing the pulse of the people, without caring about the felt needs and how to meet the needs of those people. These are leaders whose style of policy implementation is the top bottom approach, always forcing programs on people. And then there is this other group of leaders who are the servant leaders, who do not see leadership as a position or a title, but they see leadership as a means for action and as a means to set an example. They implement programs by involving community members and get in the front line on community projects. And I can tell you what works. Leaders 
who chose to dish out orders and sit in their air-conditioned offices, not engaging their communities, nor involved in field work, contribute largely to the failed policies in Nigeria because they are out of touch with what the needs of the people are and they do not get the buy-in of people for their programs. I, Damlola Akishulire, I am a servant leader. I play my role in my country by implementing programs that considers the needs of the community and I bridge the gap in accessibility to healthcare through various projects and outreaches. My desire is to see in Nigeria where policies are effectively translated into programs with great impact on the health of its citizens. The Mandela Washington Fellowship has empowered me with policy making skills and the skills of policy analysis and modeling. With these skills, I am confident of having a global impact, improving the health of women and young persons. I end my talk with this, a quote from Martin Luther King, which says, everyone can be great if they are willing to serve, as the key to greatness is selfless service. <laughs>